Let's take a look at a common medical electrical stimulation device. And these things have been around for a very long time. They've had multiple uses, but the direction of their sales has changed dramatically. So originally this type of device, which is designed to connect to electrodes and you put it across areas of your body that you want stimulated electrically. And in the past, this used to be sold as instant muscle bodybuilding things. You've probably seen the kits that were sold online with telemarketing and it would show a, a muscle bound bodybuilder and it would say with these electrodes on and it would say you can have this as well. And people bought them and nothing happened because you have to go to the gym if you want big muscles. The next use was transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, otherwise known as TENS. And in that instance, if you've got major pain in an area of your body, you can put the electrodes either side of that and it provides stimulation and it does two things. It suppresses the sensitivity of the nerves by overdriving them effectively and it can cause the brain to release endorphins. But these days it's gone more in the direction, well the fact it's called the SM player, multi-gaming expert, it's gone a very different direction. And I'll show you some of the electrodes that are sold with these. Well I'll show you one right now. You see it's not just good enough to let me, let me grab the handheld electrodes. You can get handheld electrodes to give yourself zaps, and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Or you can get insertable electrodes, much in the style of the Victorian uh, electrical treatments of the past, which I will not be demonstrating in the video. But suffice to say there is an insulator here, there's a metal tip, metal back, and it provides stimulation of bits. So let me read the instructions of this, then I'll give myself zaps with this, then we'll open it up, reverse engineer it, and explore the circuitry. So let's see, what can I read here? I can't, there are so many words I can't read in this. Um, your breath creates the feeling of sesame cake, like file or silk. Rain babbling brooks can agitate shaking, making you excited, sometimes as high and sometimes madly. Let you don't know in heaven or in hell. DIY features, you can give full play to your imagination and mining method of using this product. There are so many bits in this. Suffice to say, it says if you use it in your bits, you can wipe it with medical grade alcohol for cleansing. Okay, let me turn this on and give myself zaps with the worst possible combination electrodes right across the chest. That's a great idea. Oh, it's powered, by the way, with uh, two AAA cells in the bottom here. <laughs> Let's not read the back of that. <laughs> it's very unsubtle. Uh, socks toys, indeed, for socks. Yes. Uh, so it has a little volume control knob at the side here. Make sure it's pushed all the way up. Do not turn it on with all the way down. It's not very clear, but make sure it's all the way up. Otherwise, you're going to have a very, very bad experience. Then, holding the electrodes, or the ones that clip on, or the ones, they do gloves, they do socks, they do ear, they do electrodes for everywhere. Japan is big into this as well. It's very odd. So I'm gripping these little hand electrodes, which are a conductive rubber, and they've got these little push-in connectors here. And I shall push uh, to push and hold that to activate the power. A little red LED is lit down here. And then I shall select pulse. Oh, and immediately feel that. Okay. And it's quite slow, but I'll turn it up. I think that's making a bad connection or something because it's quite random. Oh no, it's just... Ow. And really oddly, it does alternate... It must change the priority. Oh, it is pausing. Why is it doing that? Unless it's just going round to the start of its cycle or something like that. Not really sure. Yeah, it's odd. It's missing. Uh, so if I turn this down again. Oh, actually, there's a speed button here. <laughs> oh. Uh, and I press that. It increases the speed. Not that many steps, actually. This is different to another unit I looked at. Well, let's try, let's try the one that I came a cropper last time. Let's press num. Oh, that is quite strong. Oh, that is quite forceful. So what I'm getting now is I'm getting a strong vibrating sensation in the hands. It's very jumpy. It's not, it's very different. I'm expecting the circuitry to be different inside. Then we have uh, absorb, whatever that is. Is this going to make me regret this? 
What's that? It's a vibrating, pulsing sensation that stopped and then it starts again. You can see the, the green LED flickering there. And then there's auto, which probably goes through everything. Yeah, it's going to go through everything. Like Christmas lights. So I shall turn this down now, and I shall turn it off, and we'll open it up. Right. Let's take the batteries out. I will make sure it's not holding a charge inside. Oop. Some of the electrodes seem very ill-advised, but it is quite a low power unit. It's not putting out a lot. Although the previous one I got was just immense. It actually physically sprained muscles, the actual force of the, the stimulations it caused. So there's major variation between these. Let's get the screwdriver into this. That is not reaching. This screwdriver. That's not reaching. Uh, next screwdriver. This one. Reaching but not gripping. Oh, uh, one moment. Let's go for a universal kit. Um, try this one. These aren't expensive. They're often sold with the toys. These particular ones came from AliExpress. I do wonder how widespread they're used. I have noticed, I should make a video about that, I have noticed people doing things for pleasure that are actually quite dangerous. I saw a product being sold on Etsy that is just basically... Yeah, it's designed to use with the violet ray type units, but the modern ones, and it was a sort of whip thing. And uh, it will actually, because we've reverse engineered one of those before, and the output is not isolated from the mains, the, the metal whip was directly connected to the mains via components and could give a significant electric shock. Terrible. I don't think the sellers actually realise this. hope they don't realise it. Here's the circuit board. Let's uh, get this out without getting zapped. Okay, there's the capacitor that I think is probably holding the charge. Let's short that with a pair of tweezers. Tweezers. No spark. Okay. Let's make sure that's discharged. Yes, it's discharged. Okay. Right. So, what do we have here? We have the buttons. We have the output jacks, little 2.5mm jacks. We have the LEDs, an inductor for stepping the voltage up, and the capacitor. And there's a the little potentiometer for for changing the power. It'll have quite a lot of transistors. Um, okay, right, I shall take a picture of this and we can reverse engineer it and explore the circuitry. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. I'll zoom down a little bit onto this. Get maximum coverage here. So the good news is that the little potentiometer over here is actually... Not It's not just sending a signal back to the microcontroller. It is actually limiting how much voltage can be generated, although I did measure the voltage across this capacitor and managed to get a peak of 130 volts being switched by an H-bridge to you with no obvious significant current limiting. Very strange. Here are the battery contacts. Three volts coming on here. There's the microcontroller getting fed by that directly. Little decoupling capacitor, which uh, it's a miracle this thing even gets on OK because this here is the inductor, a 2200 microhenry inductor being switched by this little transistor here. And it charges this capacitor on the back, this 250 volt capacitor, via this little diode, which looks suspiciously like, like a 1N4148, which they are rated for about 150-ish volts, I think, uh, and they are fast switching diodes. So it kind of makes sense. So we have this transistor switching the boost circuit to step the voltage up, and then these two are actually controlling the H-bridge, but the H-bridge is based entirely on PNP transistors, which is very, very odd. We have the LEDs, and there's a resistor in every output, and the way they're driving these LEDs, they're using five pins, um, they could theoretically have just put one resistor per LED and given it its own pin, but they didn't, suggesting that this may actually be designed for other products that have digital readouts and things like that, where they use a lot more LEDs. And then there are the switches, which are also multiplexed onto just three lines. Then the output, uh, the two jack connectors are just in parallel here. 
Okie dokie, let's take a look at the schematic, which is in two parts. For those wondering, I will be exploring these, but I'm going to have to use the cryptic. I'm going to look at their construction internally, and I'm going to have to be all cryptic and be Victorian about it and say, let us take a look at these health electrodes. Yes, very healthful, just to use them with our electrical medicine machines, as they did in the Victorian era. They were very adventurous with electricity in many ways that are not discussed. So here we have two triple A cells, two times triple A. And there's the decoupling capacitor. And then I've drawn the microcontroller. Absolutely massive. It's a 14 pin microcontroller. Pins for positive, pin 11, negative. Um, but I've drawn it really big just because the way things are connected to it. So they're using tri-state multiplex in the LEDs. This means they're using five lines, each with its own resistor, and technically speaking, that could drive up to 20 LEDs. Because tri-state multiplexing, you have basically a pair of LEDs connected across each pair of lines in every combination. And it just means that by changing uh, the outputs between inputs and outputs and the polarity, you can control individually 20 LEDs, so they tend to scan them. There is another pin that is not used on the circuit board. This pin here, right next to the other LED pins, and that kind of makes me think that maybe they even have the facility to control, with have six pins, which would be about 30 LEDs, to calculate how many LEDs you can drive, take the number of pins, in this case five, deduct one, four, and multiply the number of pins five times that minus one, five times four is 20. The other bit of circuitry here, the buttons are also multiplexed on three pins. We have the buttons bridging every combination of those three pins, plus we've got them going to ground the zero volt rail. So it can actually take an input, an output high, and then look at the other inputs or switch. Again, it's switching inputs and outputs. It's doing major tri-state multiplexing stuff here just to keep the pin count down. Then we've got two connections going out to the H bridge, which is on the next page. That's the bit that zaps you. Um, and we get the, the high voltage generator, which is this 2200 microhenry inductor, the little diode, going through to charge this 100 nanofarad, 250 volt capacitor, which I did measure at 130 volts. And the transistor is driven by this base value resistor and a capacitor just to basically give it a good spike initially to turn it on I'm guessing and then there's an 18k resistor in series here that you have control over so when this is turned up to its lowest uh, that's at full 18k and as you turn it basically goes down to zero which is just that 510 ohm resistor and it varies the amount this transistor is turned on and therefore the amount of energy is imparted into this inductor that when it collapses the magnetic field collapses it goes through this diode and charges up that capacitor let's take a look at the next page which is the bit that zaps you well, that's the bit that zaps you, really, but it's the bit that alternates polarity. It's really important to note that when applying electrical current across the human body, aside from the usual risks of getting putting your heart into a state of ventricular fibrillation, which is low with this unit because it's very low pulse duration, but the other things to consider are that you can't just apply pulse to DC across your body because if you if I stuck a couple of say copper coins on with wire soldered and stuck a low voltage DC supply across my skin after a while redness would occur and it would perforate the skin probably because uh, it causes um, electroporosis it damages the cells so that's why you have to apply AC so here are the two outputs from the microcontroller controlling these two transistors. This is so odd because of the way they've done this. Normally on an H bridge, I'd expect two PNP transistors going to the positive rail and two NPN transistors going to the negative rail, plus another couple of NPN transistors switching the, uh, the two PNP using them as a level shifter to basically allow the microcontroller to switch at a higher voltage, the, the basis of these transistors. But in this case, they've used NPN transistors to pull into the zero volt rail to turn on all the transistors, including the ones down here, which means they're being used in what's called an emitter follower uh, mode, which means they'll never fully turn on. It's very strange the way they've done this. But there's low current involved at high voltage, so I guess that's why they're justifying that. But these transistors are controlled by the microcontroller, and they then control the two transistors in diagonal pairs. 
And when these two are turned on, the connections here, this end will go positive and this will be negative. And then when these two are turned on, this will go positive and this will go negative. So it can actually alternate the polarity. And uh, because of the way it's configured, it can also just be nothing going out. So it can say a wee jab of positive there and negative there. And then it will turn it off and then positive there and negative there. It will just keep swapping polarity and just giving jabs or whatever they've programmed in for sensations. But that's it. Uh, rather than draw these lines across, the A connects to there and B connects to there. Both transistors, diagonal transistors, are being switched by one transistor with 33K resistors, which is quite high value for all of them. I guess the high value resistor also, with the gain of the transistors, limits the current to a degree. All these transistors are 2L. The two here are G1 and the one in the other page for switching the high voltage circuitry was also a G1. But that is it. So there is major variation in these. A lot of people seem to make them. Um, the circuitry, the appearance of the units is often very similar, but the circuitry is different. Oh, that's quite odd how they've molded this with uh, the LED. The switch uh, depressible plunger here and the LED can also effectively press that. You could. Yeah. The circuit board also has a couple of washers, little plastic washers on it. I wonder if that's just to adjust inside. Not really sure, just to make it more snug maybe, to stop it moving about with the battery connections. Don't really know. But that is it, the uh, therapy unit. The muscle exerciser, the transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation pain relief device, and the pleasure device. That is it. That's what's inside. So in a future video, I shall look at the electrodes, take them apart and see their construction. But of course, that's going to have to say Victorian medical electrodes or something like that to avoid uh, any confusion. But there we have it. The classic um, little high voltage exercise unit.